my mom took me to a stage hypnosis show. So I saw a stage hypnotist. And in my mind, I always wanted to understand how it worked. What I saw on stage was an, an adult woman. She was hypnotized into believing that she was a child as if she was five years old. And I was five at that time too. And in my child's mind, I was thinking, how is it possible that she's acting like a kid? So it really stuck in my mind, and I wanted to resolve that issue. And so I did. I, I know exactly what happened with her on stage. So that's, that was the beginning for me. And then I started taking uh, multiple different courses and classes here in America and New York. I think New York has a lot of great uh, teachers, a lot of great practitioners and schools for hypnosis. And I also went to Vegas and I studied with Mark Cunningham. We all went uh, about four years ago, I think, right? So, and that's, that's how it all began. But also besides uh, doing hypnosis, I'm also a filmmaker. I'm a writer, screenwriter. Uh, I direct and uh, I make films. So hypnosis actually helps me a lot in being a writer. It helps me to access my uh, subconscious part of myself. So I'll be talking about the history of hypnosis, which can be boring sometimes, but I'm going to try to try to make it interesting. Do, does anybody know what the word hypnosis means? Does anybody know when it started? Well, before the word hypnosis, there, was, uh, there were other words, uh, words that were used for hypnosis, and they were uh, magnetism or mesmerism. And I'm sure a lot of people know what mesmerism is. We still use that word till today when we say, I'm, I feel mesmerized, or her eyes are mesmerizing. And what it means is that it's hypnotizing, correct? So that word came from Anton Mesmer. Uh, and uh, then in 1842, we got the word hypnosis, which was actually coined by James Bray. But before that, I'm going to go back into history, and I'd like to I would like to track the entire uh, history and just get into the evolution of knowledge of hypnosis, how those ideas evolved. And it's very interesting because it, it was the entire, the entire perception of knowledge has been evolving along with the humankind. So in the last five years, um, what actually happened was there were a lot of like failures that hypnotists had, and uh, along those failures, there were like imagination came along for oh let's go back exactly five thousand years ago into ancient Egypt and India where uh, in sleep temples people practiced hypnosis actually people went into those sleep temples and they used hypnosis for healing and in there there was documents for example a document called Everest Papyrus which is a three thousand year old document and that docu document um, describes how Egyptian soothsayer uh, functions. So what it describes is actually the ideas and techniques of hypnosis. Uh, similarly, uh, about 5,000 years ago, 2,600 BC before Christ, the father of Chinese medicine, Wong Tai, he wrote techniques that involved incantations and prayers, and also Hindu Vedas. Everybody knows what Hindu Vedas are. There's also old documents from India uh, one of the first religious documents. They were also talking about the same ideas. And, uh, sim uh, and similarly, uh, shamanistic and druidic societies and voodoo and yogi, they were all uh, involving those ideas of hypnosis. Ideas of trance-like state by, let's say, frantic dancing. That was a very important element that's still used nowadays in primitive societies. And if you really think about it, frantic dancing is still, still used by people today in modern clubs. If you go to a club and you see people dancing, listening to trance music, techno music, and these, those people are dancing, some people do drugs, some don't, but they really get into a trance-like state by crazy dancing and listening to the music. So this is the trance, and this is the hypnosis state. You can actually hypnotize yourself when you're in that state. You can give yourself suggestions because your mind accepting them, and your subconscious mind is opening them. So this has been going on for a while. You're saying it's, it's, a lot of different it's, cultures is they, they've been practicing this for over two thousand, three, four thousand years. It, exactly, it's absolutely natural. It's it's one of those things that back then they didn't know it was hypnosis or trance. They were just having fun, meditating, 
connecting themselves with higher self, with the power of something that's unknown. And today we use trans state to connect ourselves, whatever, as John was saying, whether it's Buddha, Jesus, a universe, you know, for everybody it's different, whatever it is, but we have to know with the higher power. So we connected with that power through a trans-like state. And it's absolutely natural, you can access it in, in your everyday life pretty much. So uh, that's, and also frantic dancing and rhythmic repetition. If you repeat something over and over, over and over again, rhythmic dancing, you also get into trans-like state. So uh, the ideas of hypnosis were also mentioned a lot in the Bible, in Quran. Quran is the uh, youngest religion, as some of you may know. It was uh, it came into existence in 600 uh, after Christ, and the Bible of course, the, you know, the second oldest. So basically, uh, there are a lot of faith healing. There's a lot, of, a lot of laying on the hands, healing with hands. Probably all know Jesus was a huge faith healer. And then in Middle Ages, hypnosis was mostly used by royalty, and they they called it royal touch. And only kings were allowed to use that royal touch. They actually considered themselves divine, as if they were better than others. No one else was allowed to practice that. And that kind of, if you really think about it, gave them like the authority. Because as a hypnotist, as a practitioner, you have to have some kind of authority. You have to feel confident. You have to feel strong about your beliefs. And so for a king and people that came to see that king already could see the authority. And they were like, oh, yes. Something's going to happen. I'm going to heal. Edward the Confessor and King of France, they were uh, the ones who practiced that. But this idea died uh, closer to the 18th century during the Renaissance because people really, they wanted uh, some scientific explanation for everything. People weren't just believing into it. They were like, no, it's not true. Give us some scientific explanation. So, but again, it was revived in the, uh, during the time of coronation of Charles X. Then they came, uh, there came the era of magnets, magnetism. What I was talking about is the first idea of hypnosis that actually finally had a name of magnetism and then later mesmerism. So Paracelsus, and um, well, Paracelsus, he was, he was a Swiss physician. He was an astrologer, he was an alchemist, and he used magnets in his work. He began to experiment those magnets. Uh, he, took, he would take magnets and he would place them on the body of a human being and he believed in healing and so healing happened because he believed in it and people believed in it and, and you know it's step by step, step by step began to grow and belief became stronger and stronger and so it's uh, people began to believe in it strongly. He believed that heavenly bodies, again the higher power, fed through those magnets uh, in the human body as if there was a higher force, higher source and through magnets it could be uh, brought back into balance feeding through the heavenly bodies as he said and many people claim that healing occurred then the Irishman did a similar, similar thing it, it was all happening in the 15th, 15th century then the Irishman 100 years ago, his name was Valentin Greystrix. He was also known as a great Irish stroker. He had an ability to heal people laying hands on them, passing magnets also. And then around the same time, there was a priest, his name was Gasner from Bavaria. He was a Catholic priest and what he did, he actually, John was mentioning in the beginning, he was an exorcist. And again, magnetism, exorcism, they all have similar ideas that then evolve into the idea of hypnosis, but in more modern language. He was an exorcist and he believed that there were evil spirits, evil demons in a human being, uh, negative energies, and he was exercising them. How? How do you think he was exercising them? Does anybody have any idea? What's the most important thing? High, connecting with God, right? Higher power. So through prayer, he was doing it through prayer and incantation. This is all the elements of hypnosis that began to grow throughout the years. So he did that. Uh, around 1771, a father of hell, strange name, but he, he became very famous. And he also used magnets uh, on people and a lot of healing occurred. He had a student who, was, who became the most famous, the most popular. 